Welcome back. As we continue, we are taken to the banquet hall filled with people celebrating Tess' sixth birthday. Murmurs and gossips are filling the room. The reason there are so many guests is because this is the first official event that the palace has held since the recovery of the prince. All the nobles of the Viscount rank and higher were invited. And surely, everyone must be here to leave a good impression on the imperial family. Of course, our girl's family, the Hardrant family is attending as well, and we see our adorable Yule dressed up in a fancy dress. Sure enough, the other nobles' interest and gossips about them aren't stopping. According to them, the dress that Yule is wearing is a gift from his majesty. There are even rumors that his highness has gotten better thanks to her. Knowing that the Hardrant family is getting on good terms with the Imperial family, the other nobles see this as an opportunity to use them as a connection. Yule who is hearing all their plan size. She's getting exhausted from all of the opportunistic people around her. Lady Cheyenne Orin attends the celebration as well, wearing a pink dress that complements her orange hair. Despite Yule and Cheyenne being young, there are already rumors about them that the two are fighting for the crown prince's attention. All these stupid nobles think about is how to gain power. They don't care about the children's feelings at all. Finally, the main subject of the party arrives. We see the emperor, empress, and the crown prince make their grand entrance. However, it is obvious that the birthday celebrant himself is having a troubled expression on his face. Everyone in the hall expressed their sincere greetings to his majesty, and the emperor responded kindly. The emperor gives his wife a gentle kiss, praising her for the success of the banquet. Yule notices that his majesty is as devoted to his wife as ever, and all the other guests are happily expressing their joy upon witnessing the sweet scene. Setting everything aside, our girl realizes that this is the first time she is seeing Tess after the day in the library. She can't help but notice that her friend looks pale, making her wonder if Tess is sick. Then, Tess gaze locks with Yule, and his complexion immediately brightened up upon seeing our girl. This prince really loves Yule. He excitedly tries to run towards his friend. However, he was stopped by his mother, the Empress, reminding him to maintain his dignity as the Crown Prince. She emphasizes that everyone is watching his every move, so he must act with caution and not embarrass the royal family. However, Tess throws a fit, saying that he doesn't care about all the unnecessary crap. He just wants to go to Eusiniel. The other people hear his remarks, and were shocked that all the prince talks about is the lady of the Hardrant family. They take this as a sign that the Hardrant family is using their daughter to gain the favor of the prince. They say that they didn't expect this kind of cunning move from the Hardrant family and express their disappointment, commenting that our girl's family turned out to be the same as other royal families. All these negative rumors and gossips are starting to take their toll on our little girl. She clenches her fist, desperately holding herself back from saying anything. Fortunately, her parents are taking the situation easily. They gave our girl a bright smile, telling her not to pay attention to the rumors and just ignore them. Our girl, not wanting to cause any more trouble to her loving family, apologizes to Tess in a formal manner, surprising the little boy. She acts formal and distant towards Tess, that the prince immediately realizes that something is wrong. He tells Yule not to talk to him so formally and address him as she normally does, but our girl isn't backing down. She wants to show to everyone that the rumors aren't true, so that they won't bother the Hardrant family anymore. Yule formally greets Tess a happy birthday, even though she knows that this would hurt the prince's feelings. The prince is on the verge of crying at this point, meekly asking our girl why is she doing this. In our girl's point of view, she's only doing this cruel act because she has to draw a line between her and the prince to save her family. The celebration continues, and the guests leisurely enjoyed their time chatting with each other. Finally, our poor little girl can now breathe a sigh of relief. Everyone's attention is now drawn towards the banquet itself and not on her family. She it was truly a relief for her that His Majesty intervened earlier. He thanks Yule for her proper manner, saying that it is something expected from the Hardrant family. He dismisses Yule, saying that she should conclude her small talk with the prince and enjoy the party. Now, our girl is standing alone in the corner, trying her best not to attract any attention. Yule is aware that Tess will be making public appearances more often starting from now, so she should put some distance between them. However, the face that Tess made earlier still haunts our innocent girl. She didn't want to act so distant with her friend, but she had no choice. Still, we really can't blame Tess for not understanding the situation. He just turned six that day. He's still not aware of social classes and responsibilities. Edel then calls up to our girl, asking why she's in the corner all by herself. The boy states that everyone their age wanted to have a conversation with her, but our girl states that she doesn't want to interact with anyone. That's why she chose to isolate herself. Edel then comments that he can't just leave Yule all be herself, expressing that it is his duty as her friend. 
She asks if that's the reason why the boy cancelled all his sword lessons together with Yule once he was invited to visit the Imperial Knights. Edel was caught. He states that his dream was to become the captain of the Imperial Knights, so he won't be passing up that chance. Yule remarks that the opportunity was indeed quite unprecedented. As knights who serve the Imperial family, the Imperial Knights are an exclusive group that is notoriously difficult to join. She wonders how Edel received such an invitation. The boy revealed that his highness was the one to recommend him, surprising Yule. Our girl is aware that Tess despises Edel because he thinks that the boy is trying to steal Yule from him. So, it's a mystery why would his majesty vouch for Edel. However, the knight candidate just thinks of it as his majesty finally recognizing his talent and didn't put too much thought of it. Edel the remarks that it's worrying how Tess is constantly ill. Even though he has drank the foreign medicine prescribed to him, it's said that it didn't help one bit. This is the first time that our girl heard about Tess getting sick, that's why she let out a loud voice from the shock. Catches the attention of the prince. Our girl gets closer to Edel, pressing for more details due to her extreme concern for her friend. However, to his majesty's eyes, Yule is being too close and clingy to Edel, thinking that they have something going on. Envy and jealousy filled the heart of the young prince. Right after Yule acted cold towards him, he now sees her clinging to another man, or so he thinks. As his emotion gets darker, a sudden flash of lightning and rumble of the thunder is experienced outside, giving our girl an ominous feeling. Our girl's memories of that day are still vivid. The palace was suddenly hit with a storm of thunder and lightning, breaking the window glass. At the same time, His Majesty the Prince suddenly collapsed. Worried, the Emperor shouts for the physician to come immediately. Our girl was too stunned to react. All she can do is softly call for her friend's name as she observes him from a distance. The startled nobles panicked and started running away. They're all thinking about the same thing. A demon must be attacking the palace. Of course, Yule's family is of no exception. The Duke carries our girl up and went home with their mother. Our girl tried to stay with Tess, but her father tells her that the physician will handing the prince and everything will be fine. Unfortunately, her father's words were wrong at that time. Everything didn't go back to normal, and she wasn't able to see Tess ever since. That was the last time she saw the friend she knew. After that day, the Emperor exiled the Hardrant family to Valen, and 14 years later, the Tess she met was a completely different person. Yule's companies asked our girl what could she be thinking about to be dozing off in the middle of a tea party, to which our girl states that she was just looking back on the past. With a gentle smile on her face, she comments that she's reminiscing of all the events that led to this day. On this day, Yusiniel Hardrant is now 20 years old. Edel pries further, question what past is she talking about? However, his curiosity was abruptly interrupted by Lady Orin, elbowing him. Angry, Edel asks what was that all about, to which the lady reprimands him from prying any further. She wonders if the order of the knights normally lacks tactfulness and etiquette. The two continued bickering with each other, fighting about who's closer to our girl, making Yule laugh. Yule comments that the two are getting along well, making the both of the flustered. Edel states that it wasn't the case, rather, he's curious how Orin and Yule became close. You see, there was animosity between the two ladies, as they were both fighting for the prince's attention. Or at least that was the case for the other noble's eyes. In response, both Yule and Orin looked at each other and chuckle. Our girl reveals that after she got exiled, Orin kept writing letters to her, making sure to keep in touch, and that was when their friendship began. With a gentle look on her eyes, Yule states that if it wasn't for Orin, she wouldn't have known what was going on the capital. She comments that Lady Orin wrote regularly, unlike someone she knows, pertaining to Edel, making him feel guilty, but he insists that he did write her letters. Shortly after Yule stopped writing to Edel, Orin boasted that she's also been exchanging letters with Yule, surprising Edel. The man expresses his frustration, saying that he had to go through Orin just to know what our girl has been up to, making him feel uncomfortable. While sipping her tea, our girl wonders where the heck did Edel's letters disappear to. Orin then clarifies that she and Lady Yule aren't rivals. Neither of them ever wanted the position of the crown princess. Besides, the lady states that she's interested in someone else, then proceeds to give Edel the stickiest stare and most suggestive smile on earth. Unfortunately, the thick-headed knight didn't catch the hint. He's no clue what the girl is trying to imply. Poor Orin. The lady then remembers something of important, making her flinch a little. She asks our girl what happened at the Conceum, apologizing in advance if it's a topic that Yule doesn't want to talk about. Orin heard rumors that Lily was disrespectful towards our girl, so she would like to apologize in her stead. Yule tells her that it's fine, saying that it isn't Orin's fault. 
Despite that, Orin feels guilt about the action of her little sister. She states that it's all because their father spoils Lily too much. She reveals that her younger brother and her aren't very close to Lily. Our girl then recalls Orin's litter brother and who's. As she remembers, that young boy always blushes whenever he talks to our girl. Orin tells her that their father will probably ask Yul a favor to pardon Lily, but our girl doesn't think she has that kind of authority. Her friend then comments that the prince will probably listen to her. Yul then looks to the side, feeling sad, as she comments that it has been 14 years since they have seen each other, so she doubts that Tess will listen to her anymore. Orin wonders if that's really the case, stating that everyone in the castle thinks that the two have a special relationship. Well, leaving that aside, Orin remarks that Lily will probably learn her lesson from this. Our girl then states that she only let it slide because she was Orin's sister, but if she ever disrespects her again, she won't be so forgiving. As the dusk arrives, the friends concluded their tea party and our girl sends them off. As she walks back to her place, something is clearly troubling her, evident on the melancholic expression on her face. She ended up coming to a particular place again before she even realized it. It's the tree that her parents planted as celebration for her birthday, where Tess and her often played when they were little. She honestly thought that the tree would have died since no one was taking care of it when they got exiled. Our girl is glad to see it well and all grown up. A sudden gust of wind then blows through our girl's hair. She then closes her eyes and states that she made it clear that they have to put some distance between them. As it turns out, Yule is speaking to Tess who magically appeared right behind her. The naughty prince grabbed her waist, saying that he had no other choice. He hugs Yule tightly and rested his tired head on her shoulder, remarking that Yule wasn't coming to him so he had to find her instead. In a cold tone of voice, Yule states that she has already told the prince not to come to their estate, but Tess protests that he used to come visit in the past. Tears then began falling from the prince's eyes, asking his childhood friend if she has really come to hate him now. He apologizes to our girl, saying that he will even spare Lily Cheyenne if she wishes to, if that will make Yule warm up to him again. The desperate prince begs Yule not to hate him, so our girl clarifies that she doesn't hate Tess. She doesn't hate him, however, he's the emperor now, so they cannot treat each other as friends like before. Yule doesn't want any strange rumors about her family spreading again just because she's getting too close to the emperor. However, Tess grabs her hand firmly, reassuring her that it won't happen. No one will ever bother them again. With a gentle smile and teary eyes, he promises that nothing bad will happen to her and her family. He proudly states that he will give her anything she wants and desire. Our girl's expression was that of shock. The Tess in front of him right now is saying that same words with the same look on his face when they were young. She thought that she doesn't know this version of Tess anymore, but it looks like time hasn't changed the sweet boy one bit. She then realizes the possibility that maybe, just maybe, she is that one who has changed. Acknowledging Tess's feelings, she asks the Emperor if she can treat him like she used to before. Hearing this made Tess's heart flutter from extreme happiness. However, Yule clarifies that she won't do it when there are other people around, and Tess shouldn't come to their estate again because her parents might feel uneasy with him around. The Emperor agrees and tightly hugs Yule, expressing his gratitude. Our girl tries to push him away, saying that she cannot breathe from the hug. Despite that though, our girl is also delighted by how things have played out and that Tess is as clingly as ever. It might have taken them 14 years to get here, but everything is fine now. She has been admitted into the Conceum, and can freely visit the Imperial Library as well. From this point on, she can just focus on her research about finding ways to go back to her world. She gently hugs Tess back, feeling a sense of safety. However, unbeknownst to her, her friend's gentle expression from before is now long gone. He gazes into nothingness, seemingly potting something evil. What will happen next? Will the relationship of the two return to how it used to be? What could this unpredictable emperor be plotting? Stay tuned for the next episode and as always, it is our destiny to discover new manhwas.